If you like a Western or Denver omelet, you are going to love the hell out of today. But what makes today special is that this Western omelet will not be made with two eggs or four eggs or go crazy even a dozen eggs. It'll be made with what we believe will end up being 200 eggs and one fly if I can get my hands on that stupid thing. A 200 egg Western omelet. How could that possibly go wrong? Here's my bowl for beating the eggs. This is, this is a 30 quart bowl. We won't need all of the 30 quarts. And my pan is this. <laughs> this is a giant paella pan. I mean, I've seen pans this size used for paella. Not seen them for eggs. And when I was thinking about, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, you know, there's, there's no pan that could be possibly big enough except a paella pan. I got it all flunk out. In my head, this is a genius thing to be creating. In reality, well, the next 50 minutes or so will prove me right or wrong. Right, boys? Oh, yeah. Right. So the only way to cook this, and look, I realize I could do it on the Evo. The Evo has a slight slope to it. So if you get down right here, Max, you see it doesn't sit flat because of the slope. Therefore, I don't know that it will cook evenly and I want it to cook evenly. So I'm gonna cook it on my grill, which it's actually too big for, but what I'll do is I'll rotate it slowly like this. Not quite as smoothly as this because it's a grill. I think the whole thing's gonna be good. Who's confident? I am. Like uh, thumbs up from Chance and Max is, uh, you're still in the middle. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. All right, first things first, we have some vegetables to cook. First move is putting the paella pan on the grill. Just like that. The heat is on low. It's where I'm gonna keep it. There's gonna be a lot of egg in here and I don't want it to burn. First thing we're gonna do, because I don't want this thing to stick, first thing we're gonna do is give it a good spray. You gotta be careful. Sticking egg is our enemy today, folks. Now we'll add some butter. And we'll start with one stick, quarter pound, and see how that does. And remember what we're gonna have to do, because there's no heat on the pan from here to here, we're gonna have to do this constantly. And that's okay, I'm all right with that. So if anything is the hallmark from today, it's gonna be patience and going slow. Because trying to rush eggs is a mistake, especially this many. And as our butter begins to melt in our pan, let's add the vegetables. And with our butter melted, we add the traditional Western omelets vegetables. We'll start with green pepper, diced, red pepper diced, and a combination of yellow onion and uh, scallions or green onion. Again, diced. And we mix. And honestly, it could be the start of a paella. How much is a giant paella pan this size? 30 bucks. 70 bucks. Chancy? Final answers? Yep. 140. I mean, come on, we needed to, we needed to commit. The only way to pull this off is to commit and go for it. You gotta have the right tools for the job, gentlemen. And we turn. It's like a Ferris wheel of vegetables right now. Well, the vegetables are gonna start cooking slowly. And we have more things to go in here. Should we start cracking eggs? Because that's gonna be no small feat. It's fucking enormous. It's fucking enormous. Look, if I can flip it comfortably, I can get it out comfortably. But then the question is, what do we put it on? And then how do you get a sense of its bigness? How about we do this? That's what she said. She talks a lot, man. Here's the plan. In front of me are six racks of 30 eggs each. That makes 180 eggs. I know how much I can fill up my bowl with uh, beaten eggs. And it can still fit in my paella pan. I want this to be 200. So we're gonna crack all these, add another 20, and then hope that it's not gonna be too much. 
And it's a lot of eggs to crack. So helping me crack eggs today, ladies and gentlemen, will be our very own Chance. Thank you, thank you. Did you know You're I'm uh, actually ranked in egg cracking? So No, go ahead. Tell us about that. I'm where, a where top is it? ranked egg cracker. That's all I can say. Where'd that happen, Chance? Tell us about egg that University. bullshit thing you just said. <laughs> Chance apparently went to egg you. Here's your eggs. Thank you. I'll take my eggs over here. And here's our bowl. All right, Chance, you have eggs in front of you. You have a receptacle for your shells. And let's just start cracking, shall uh, we? Okay. Crack go back? away. Crack away. I'd like to see how you do this first. Oh, a one-hand crack. Well, we don't want shells, though, like that. I just got my second egg. I got shells in. So maybe I'll just do this. Maybe that's easier. Oh, I think we can do 200 eggs, Chance. I agree. Now wait, here's something important. Show me where you're cracking the egg. I'm going right on the corner here. No, bad, that's a mistake. Okay. So, so notice this, when you take an egg, which camera is gonna see this? When you take an egg and you crack on the side, there's a chance that you force shell up into it. Got it. You should crack on, on a flat surface. That way you have less of a chance. There's a famous Martha Chance. Ah, there's a famous Martha Stewart thing where she did that and somebody called her out or whatever. So crack on the flat, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lot of eggs, man. Wait, and then we have to beat them. Good lord. How are you doing on yours? Oh, you're beating me. Well, I didn't know we were racing. We can race if you want, but. My first uh, flat is complete, Chancy. My hands are getting slippery. It's becoming harder and harder to hold them. Okay, I'm done with my third. That means I can get the other ones and add this other 20. Excuse me for one sec. My ranked egg cracking may have been a bit of a bluff. You think? There's a chance? A chance. A chance. Of all the things to lie about. <laughs> right before you're about to do it. <laughs> all right. You don't lie about things that are about to happen. The other 20's done. There's one more, but this guy's already been cracked. It's okay. All right. Done. Lift up your bowl of shells. I'm proud. Are you proud? We almost needed another bowl. We did a good job here, man. All right. Thanks I don't for know what to me. do with shells. I think you, you smash them up, you put them in your garden, and it helps shit grow. Compost. All right. Let's clean the mess up around here, and then, Max, what do we do? We cook? We whisk. We whisk. Before we beat, we have a couple things to add. Wow, is this amazing? Look it, that's my hand. That's my little hand in the middle of this ridiculous pan. Wow, all right, you know what's coming next? What's the protein part in the Western omelet that's not the eggs? It's gotta be ham. Damn you. Yes, and it's black forest ham. And why black forest ham, you might ask? Because of the smokiness, the flavor is like on steroids. Ham is nice. Black Forest ham is tremendous. Look at this. Oh my gosh. But don't forget, Max, what are the, one of the things we have to do? Turn the pan because the heat is uneven for us. A towel assist. Oh my gosh. So of course the Black Forest ham is already cooked. I'm just trying to get it, you know, married into all the gorgeous flavors that are already here, get a little heat on it. Because once the eggs go in, I don't know how much hotter it gets, especially with the amount we're putting in. But this is the perfect time for something right there. It's garlic, which I don't think is a traditional component to a Western omelet, <gasps> but it is today. Uh-oh. Oh my God, it's on you. Oh my God, it's not leaving you alone. Do you want me to get them? Gonna burrow into your fucking no, brain. they they're blind, man. Yeah, well, it can smell your brain. 
don't know why everybody freaks out so badly about these things. Just leave the poor kid alone. Come on, buddy. Excuse me, you want me to take him out to another part of the backyard and let him go? Yes. Jeez Louise. I've never seen people so Stay scared in my life. Me. Where do you want me to go? Stay the f away from me, Joe. I'll take him up front. All right, now that all the excitement is over, let's add a little butter to our garlic. Hell, I got an idea. Let's add a little garlic to our garlic. I mean, a couple of fat cloves in an omelet this big, please. And like usual, we wait for it to start to get super fragrant, and that takes about 45 seconds. Then we'll mix it in. Ah, yes, we're there. Ah, look how beautiful. So then we'll just mix it all together. All right, this is pretty much exactly where I want it. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kill the heat, okay? We'll whisk our eggs, and then Maxie and Chancy, and we make an omelet. When I'm at home and whisking a couple eggs for my breakfast, I put the eggs in a bowl and I use a fork. But this amount of eggs, this 200 egg behemoth, behemoth requires a whisk. And it's at this moment that we would like to shout out to one of the titans of the cooking world on YouTube. We're all fans of a guy named Babish. I'm sure a lot of you know who he is. His real name is Andrew Rea. He's really good. You don't see much of him. Pretty much only see him from here down. But he does his things in a technical way that are perfect. Near perfect. I don't know. What do I know? I, I don't have the skills or the training. We just like what he does. And Babish is a proponent of the tiny whisk. So today we honor Babish with our own tiny whisk for our 200 egg omelet. We're having fun. We mentioned him in the tiny whisk thing a couple episodes ago and people thought it was a fight. It's not a fight. Why would I pick a fight with somebody that has four times the subscribers that I do? That would be a foolish move. I'm just saying, if Babish likes a tiny whisk, we're gonna use our tiny whisk today for our 200 egg omelet. Good luck. I mean, good luck. How's it's that a whisk. Work out? Look, find out. Here's how it's gonna work. Watch. Say it, Max. And we whisk. And we whisk. Look, it works. But I gotta admit, the problem is, is my fingers are getting wet too. Okay, too small. We love you, Andrew, but I think we have to move on from this. Let's try a traditional whisk. Say it, Max. And we whisk. And we whisk. I say if you're not like hitting the bottom and the sides, you're just stirring the eggs and that's not gonna beat them the way you want. So hit the, good Lord. I'm getting there, but even this is problematic. Hold on, I have an idea. So here's my thinking. Let's try this whisk. This feels like a whisk that can handle 200 eggs. Shall we? I have a step stool because I got to get above this giant bowl of eggs. Say it, Chance. And we whisk. It's more like a... I don't even actually know if I'm whisking. I think I am. Wait, what if I do a motorboat thing? No, that's stupid. Talk about the right tool for a job. Full yolks in here. All right, at this point, we need a little seasoning. Some salt and pepper would be in order. And look, it's a lot, so we'll give it that much. And we whisk again. I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised this has not gone all over my legs. <laughs> now, I think we can make our omelet. We're here. We're at the moment of truth. Well, maybe the moment of truth is flipping this guy, but but here's where we are. It's a moment of truth. It's definitely a moment of truth. 
Because I gotta lift this bowl and bring it over and dump it in without spilling it. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go, we'll go right in the middle. Oh, please don't be too much. Holy shit. Dang. That is a ton of eggs. And now we'll just mix everybody in here together nicely. But do you see what happens if I go too fast one way? Look, it makes a tsunami, no, a tidal wave. It makes a tidal wave of eggs. So now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what our goal is, is to get this cooked as evenly as we can and then flip one half over. That, of course, will be the fun part that right now I'm feeling pretty good about. Anybody else? I'm feeling good. Likewise. Yeah. You guys feel good because it's not your job to do that. It's my freaking job. It's also my job to remember to turn the pan because only one half, because only two thirds are on the heat. And I know the eggs are shifting on top, but it's really what's on the bottom that's concerning me. So we do this, we just let things happen the right way, I hope. In the cooking of an omelet, it's important to release what cooks around the edges and let the uncooked egg run underneath. So I don't know how cooked this is yet, but you can see over here. Oh, it's, ooh, surprise, surprise. It's starting to cook. So right now the goal is just that. Really just sort of go around the edge with a soft spatula. And you see here how this is happening? Right, it's all good. This is what we want. And if we live right, this is gonna turn out. And if we've not been living right, then we just got a huge effing pile of eggs. And this side too now, these edges are going quicker. The side edges I'm seeing as opposed to the top and bottom. But still, uncooked egg runs behind. That's the key to a giant, well, it's the key to a small omelet. And if you take your, your spatula and push down in the middle, you actually feel it not hitting metal, but hitting like cooked egg. So just keep it up. Uh, nobody said this would be quick. We only said it would be, well, I guess big. I don't even know if we promised good, but it's gonna be good because all the components are good. We're out of here. Peace. Wait, come here, look what I just found. A stray yolk? A stray yolk. Yo? What the heck? How did my three different whisks miss that kid? This is almost therapeutic. And I don't know what therapy it's giving me other than I'm just enjoying this moment. I'm really feeling very one with this pan right now. Okay, so you don't get bored. I'm gonna carry on with this. We will let you see some as we go, but the next important step will be when we think it's set enough that I can fold it in half. And that will be close to adding cheese time. So my confidence level was ridiculously high before this started. Nearly 100 out of 100 that this would work out. The last uh, five minutes I've sunk to a low of about 40 out of 100. And it doesn't help that I'm getting shit from Max on why this is taking so long, on why this side is cooking and this side is not cooking, when I just put it in an oven. Well, why is it? I would put it in an oven if I had an oven this big, but I don't. So look it, I'm having to regulate the heat by turning. Why am I explaining myself to them when you're an idiot? It's gonna be okay, I hope. It's the best I can say right now. <gasps> oh God, did you see that? <sighs> that would have been bad on so many levels, not the least of which is I could have, I would have had to have cleaned up 200 eggs on the floor. What did you just say? I said I think I've just gone down to 20%. I'm feeling very unsure about this. Very You're unsure. Such a pussy, have some confidence. You should shut the fuck up. God. <laughs> You think Babish would fuck this up? No, because he's a professional. 
You know what? That has to cook right there. This doesn't need to cook. So now I just have to do this. Just stand here waiting for that sh to cook. I mean, this is difficult circumstances. I'm getting fed up with the excuses. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. It's happening. Look it. What's your percentage now? I'm still at 20. <laughs> it's going to cook, there's no question. Whether it will flip, that's the question. All right, we're, we've made some good progress here. Most of the uncooked egg is gone. I'm just still trying to get it to run in behind of the cooked parts. And I think we're pretty close. Uh, I'm going to add some cheese now and let it start to do its thing. My confidence level that started at 100 and, and then took a short dip to a 40% uh, slid to 20. But I'll be honest with you, right now I'm sitting somewhere around a 5. So a couple big handfuls of Monterey Jack. Maybe 3. So God knows what this thing's gonna weigh, but I just put like three cups of cheese in here, so it's gonna weigh something. And my goal now is just to loosen enough that when that moment comes, I can just try and flip one half over. It's only one half. And you can see how this is happening. This is, this is coming up in sections of about five inches which does not bode well for my immediate future. But I can tell you this, it's gonna be freaking delicious. And if you want some eggs, just send Max your uh, address and he'll be sure to send you some. All right, here's my plan. You can see this half of the omelet is set the most. There's still liquid over here and that's okay. This is gonna become the bottom and this half is gonna become the top. So using this large spatula, I'm going to release as much underneath as I can with this one. You see what I'm doing here? And this tells me, perhaps innocently and naively, that I might be able to do this. Is it possible that I can use this cutting board to prop under here? If I could get that far with it, see that works. Wish I had two of those. Two, three. Oh my God. Look at all the color. <laughs> it actually sort of made it. So there's the uncooked egg cooking away right there. Let me have a bite though. Mmm. How is it? It's freaking delicious. Oh, it's hot. Oh, God. Well, it ain't the prettiest omelet I've ever seen. I will be honest. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, oh, here we are. The fly. Jeez. Okay, I got to admit, kind of impressed. It's an awful lot of... Western Denver omelet, whatever you want to call it, but it's purdy. I just need some green onions. There you go. How's that? This fork feels way too small to tackle something this big, but then this is not a competition. I'm not meant to try and eat this in 30 minutes or it's free. This was just to make a big ass omelet. And somebody asked about making a lot of eggs and I don't remember who it was, but we did it. So consider this for you. And now we should have a bite of our gorgeous 200 egg Western omelet. And I'm just gonna go to the edge, right? Try and get everything. Green pepper, red pepper, onion, the black forest ham. Wow. Western omelet was my father's thing. Every outside restaurant brunch this is what he had. It's been years since I've had one. And it doesn't just bring back memories of my father. It brings back memories of how damn good 
a freaking Western omelet is. Who even thinks about it today? There's too many fancy things. Goat cheese, spinach, blah, 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 truffles. This is the shit. Oh my God. Some might say this is better than a WAP. I'm not that guy. I'm just saying it's really good.